first thing that's going to go is this skirt right here. Let's take a look at the exhaust and see just how we're going to be able to manage to put the exhaust on this. And it's going to have to go like around here and up here and straight out right there. Because you just got just one place for the single exhaust right there and you got the spare tire and then you got the gas tank here. So she's going to have to get another one come all the way out here. Looks like at one time it was on a frame <clears throat> on a frame machine. Different to a drain plug. How do you like that? There's an old muffler. Trying to get it through this area for the other pipe will be a, kind of a challenge. We have to move this out of the way. I could worry about that later. something that you would see on a frame machine. Then again, it is 64 years old, so there's no telling what would happen. But what I'd like to know is that how we're going to get two true dual exhausts in this. I mean, it's buried. <laughs> and then you got this plug goes over here. And joins in into a wire right here. I already sprayed these flanges pretty good, so it should be easy to come off by tomorrow. But it seems like the exhaust system for this car was an afterthought. I mean, look at it. it looks like an afterthought. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. You got a universal joint there, one there, and one there. That's the transmission. This is what I like about these older transmissions is that the drain plugs are on the pan of the transmission, which is really nice. So instead of dropping the pan, you just train it right there. It's just that easy. So all the old mechanics out there that says, oh, when I was your age, you know, thing, I used to do this in five or ten minutes, well, well I could see why, because everything had drain plugs in it. We'd have to drop pans back then. We didn't have to drop pans. But yeah, there you go. Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this uh, shield off and drain the torque converter. So that should be pretty good. All right, now that i got the pan off, i just... Just looking out the way. Alright, I'm good. Turn this slow until I get to that bolt, that drain bolt that's on it.
there. Twelve is draining. There's gonna be more that's gonna be coming out of there. It's just gonna store up like that. There it goes. We'll let that drain. And we'll put the plug back in and then we'll refill it. See if that makes a difference. This one go through here and over here, and maybe have this side cross over here, and then just put this one right here. That way, both pipes will be an even length. Length. I mean, it would be nice, you know, if I could just have it run straight out right here. But you got the starter here, you got the tie rods here, you got this steering. Linkage here, and the and the exhaust flange is way up there. Yeah. So I don't know. Just have to see. I'm right, gonna try the Type F now. See how that works. Okay, I got the Type F transmission fluid in it. I was driving it for a little while to let it circulate in the system. And I also have the RPMs uh, turned down because you remember in the last video the RPMs were pretty high. Someone uh, left a comment and mentioned that the RPMs on these cars don't have to be high at all. And the first thing that came to my mind was, I knew it! <laughs> because the guy that I got the car from, he said that the last mechanic that worked on it said that the RPMs had to be high so the engine doesn't stall out when you had it in gear. Well now, I had to go with that because I wasn't familiar with Studebakers until until now. Now I'm more familiar with them. And it's just like any other car. It doesn't have to be set that high. So now, um, the uh, transmission does something that it's never done since I had it. You could step on the accelerator pedal and it would downshift <laughs> so that tells me right there that it's been running even better since I had it and of course the muffler is still bad but tomorrow I'm gonna get some true dual exhaust put on it and I also have this uh, intake and exhaust uh, manifold gasket kit for the uh, 232 V8 Studebaker engines so I got that and I got intake manifold gaskets in case one leaks in the future. But when it does, I already have the gaskets for it. So
speed, then I'm going to floor it and I'll downshift. Like I said, something that's never did since I had it.